Hey everybody, welcome back to the Aldo Vela Games podcast, where today it's going to be our San Remo. So it's a really important one, but it always seems so difficult to get this one right. I think the last couple of years I've done okay, but it's just so difficult to get this right. I'm, I would pull up the profile because I know that people in the comment section do like to have profiles, but like, come on. I think we all know what this profile is. been the same for many, many, many decades. Yeah. Although, isn't there like a rumor of like some kind of other little climb being added in? I think it's called Le Mani, I think, which is an odd name for Italy. Um, but yeah, it looks like the hardest climb in that it's yeah. longer and goes higher. Um, but it's it's only just after Turchino. So um, it's basically depending on this landslide um report so i'm not, like sure, Pag I'm not sure Pagarchi will be attacking from there but <laughs> i'd like to see it included just all the time i yeah. think why why not people say san Remo's too easy you know why not just add in a couple like go inland a couple of times and just put in a little hill but anyway that's by the by we all know what the profile looks like it's your presser and poggio uh not particularly hard it's the what was it the easiest monument to finish but the hardest one to win just because it is such a lottery. And you know what? That's reflected in Vela Games as well, because we are probably all just a little bit lost, but all on a fairly similar train of thought as well, is what I'm expecting. So you look at the rider prices, of course, they're all pretty much the same, but Pagatra and Vanderpool at 32 credits is, uh, of course, the biggest a conundrum, I think, going on, because... I did a solo video earlier today, and you can't get Pagacha, Vanderpool, and Mass Pedersen onto the same team. It's impossible. Even if you filled up the rest of your team with four credit riders, it doesn't work. Which is, I think, a bit of a shame because I do think that Pedersen is a big threat for this race, considering how he's looked this year. But uh, I think the main thing is Vanderpool. I think we all know that Pagacha is a pretty safe call, but let's let's see what people think. Dan. Vanderpool, no racing this year, but is that putting you off? Oh no! I mean, was it twenty twenty? Was it last year or the year before that he had he came from the back injury, or air quotes injury, taking time off after the Olympics, and you know, no race days and smashed it. Uh, he's probably the only rider potentially in the whole peloton where, in a I'd pick him for a monument where he's had no race days before that. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Pedro? Well, we all know how, how MVDB goes, and um, he for sure must be in good shape. I don't doubt it. Um, but the big thing for me is I can't have both him and Poggy, and Poggy has shown he's in great form. So I believe uh, if I had to pick between of them, the two of them, I'll go for Poggy, but of course, on paper, um, Vanderpool has the the perfect characteristics for this race, so it's hard to leave him out. It's just a question of see if uh, you can create a team without him and with him, and see which one you think it's gonna score more points. My problem with when you have Pedersen in here, right, is that. Now I have six credits to put somewhere, but I can put them onto a 10-credit rider, of neither of which I like particularly much. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it, it doesn't sway me to well, go... Shall I, shall I tell you how I'm very happy with my team, and that might help you out? Have you picked neither of Poggy or Vanderpool or something like that? No, I have oh. not picked Bogarcha. Okay. Because... As much as I love him, and I, I saw a stat earlier that this is the only race um, that he hasn't podiumed or something. Is that right? Is that yeah? The only yeah, start, uh, the only one day race he hasn't podiumed, um, and other ones he DNFs like San Sebastian. Um, so I just think it's because he can't win a sprint against any of these guys. I say can't. He will now, but he yes. he can't. He can't. I don't think it's physiologically possible that he can beat 
Mads or Van der Poel in a sprint, he's got to go solo. Uh, the thing is, if he's solo, he probably is going to be with, uh, not solo, if he attacks, he's going to be with Pidcock or Mohoric or someone, who I think both of them could probably, they're all quite equal. So my team is, I've got Pedersen, Laporte, Matthew Van der Poel, and then I've got Meyerhofer in there. Yeah. and two italians who i'm f from history i'm fairly sure they'll be in the breakaway so i'm kind of banking that all those breakaway points potentially and a my hoffer top 10 or whatever yeah. um that will kind of balance out not having pogaccia it's it's worth what yeah i mean you you raise a really good point about the breakaway points because the lottery of a breakaway is worthwhile bringing up is that you get 60 points for 50 percent race distance and then you get another 60 at 50 20 and 10. now realistically the breakaway is not going to make it to the 20 kilometers to go mark that's that's too far but could they make it to 50 kilometers to go yes they have done in the past so it's possible you can get a four credit rider who gets you 120 points um i just realized i've closed the other games why the heck did i do that that is g a genius move from me <laughs> That's so smart. I love. I I love that. I might bring it blind. It. That's that's brave. <laughs> I, I I just have. I have all the rider prices engraved on my head. When it gets <laughs> like the Nito Classic at the end, I am just. I'm absolutely cracked. Anyway, back to the scoring system. If you get a hundred and twenty points with a four credit rider, it's actually pretty decent because when you look at the scoring system, that's the equivalent of them coming twenty first, uh, which. You know, if you were to put on a four credit rider and they were going to come 21st, you'd be pretty happy with that, to be honest with you. So it's it's worthwhile throwing in some of those guys and paying attention, like Dan has done, to who is likely to get into a breakaway. Having like Mark Stewart, the amount of times he was in the UE tour breakaways. He looks well, you like see, I, I was going to pick Mark Stewart for Tirreno because of that, and he did nothing. Right. Uh, it yeah. was Cotucci and um, yeah. some other... I think it's Stockley, wasn't it? The Swiss guy. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they have to. They will be in the breakaway. Um, I mean, I, I've picked Tonelli because he's basically done 200 plus, 200 plus kilometres in the Milan San Remo breakaway the last like four years or something. Yeah. Um, Mattia or Davide Bice, whichever one I've picked, because yeah. they're yeah. always in breakaways. Um, so I thought, I don't mind not picking fours purely because I'm very confident picking three fast finishes in Laporte. Uh, Van der Poel yeah. and Pedersen. Yeah, basically, if you pick one of Van der Poel or Poggy, you you can only have three big riders. If you pick, <clears throat> like, for example, um, if I take off, I don't know, put on Hershey, even though that's an absolutely stupid decision. <laughs> if anybody does that, that's absolutely madness. And then, well, I don't know, Cousin of what? Like, you can do that. And you can get four riders in there, but you lack one of the big two. Um, and then you get two fours in there as well. So you, you can do that. But you know, look, back to the rider prices. I've got sidetracked. Um, Pedersen, I've already hyped him up a little bit. Um, Irfan, you were just talking about Pedersen and how you think he's a good pick. Uh, do you think? Do you think he can follow an attack by Pagacha? And or Van der Poel of Apoggio. I think he can. I um, mean, like Dan showed us some days ago, the UAE training on the Apoggio and motoring up. I think there'll be no problem with much. He'll be well placed. If he can follow a thermonuclear attack from Pogacar, I don't think so. I'm under the impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think if Pedersen is able to get on the back of them, I think he wins because I think he's faster than both of these guys. Maybe they do a Kwiatkowski 2017 versus Sagan and force him to work all the time. I don't know, but I'd still favour Pedersen to win that scenario. Well, I think he wouldn't have to work, would he? Because he'd potentially have Milan behind. And that's the thing with Van der Poel as well. Van der Poel, ironically, our sort of three favourites have got someone who can be there behind. Um, you got Coy, yeah. potentially, Milan, potentially, and Philipson, potentially. Yeah. Um, I don't think we've seen that recently there's not been that many scenarios in recent years where somebody has had someone behind it's usually 
ones and two or not even twos it's ones groups of leaders which is where tom screens comes in i think because tom screens is potentially going to be mad to lead out man um if if the two groups come back together mm. um yeah yeah i think you're right it's because usually sandra works and that there's a group or re reason you have to say there's a group of one to help for something like that then you get this secondary chasing group which usually occupy most of the positions of the top 10 if not all of them and then you have a third sprinting group which is where you would likely find your phillips and your coys your Mullins. now it's possible the first group is a smaller group of two vanderpool and poggy in which case the Group behind group two is is bigger because it's got Pedersen with all of the host mm -hmm. of people in there, and then they might work to bring them back. Um, it's very possible that happens. That would put a real scupper to Pedersen and to Christophe Laporte because they would likely work for their respective mm. sprinters, which would really screw up everybody wanting to pick those people. Which is why yeah. they, they do provide a little bit of risk, and why it is sometimes just a bit better to go with Pogacar and Vanderpool because you. Probably know that they're going to be the ones who are pinging it off the front. Um, I think Pedersen's most expensive assist points. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And Pedersen's just Pedersen's the weird middle ground where he could go with them or he could do a sprint. But I'm willing to take a gamble on it. But you know what? Moving on. I mean, we've got some of these sprints here. We've got Philipson. We've got Coy. They're 26 credits, 24 credits, and Milan's 14 credits. We'll get onto him in, in a while. I'm not really thinking of taking Philipson. To be honest, I just think that I just I don't think he's looked fantastic so far this year. To be honest, I'm not willing to put 26 credits into Philipson when I could put those into Pedersen instead. I just feel like that's a safer shout. But the 24 credit riders, there are a few to be picking from. Some of them pretty high quality. Dan, um, the 24 credit riders, over to you. Which ones do you think are good or bad? Peacock, Mahorich, and Laporte scream out the mo the best for me. The problem with Mohoric is there's only one scenario which he can win and he's already done it. Um, Pidcock is a similar one, except I think he's probably f like, he's in much better shape than last year. But I think Laporte is kind of in that Mads Pedersen bracket where he's the same build and shape as uh, Vanderpol, but he can win bunch sprints, which Vanderpol doesn't really do. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. I just I think Laporte's a, a weird one as well. Could he go with it? I mean, heck, Visma Lisa bike been on fire recently. It wouldn't surprise me if Laporte won this race. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I agree. Laporte, Mahorich, Pidcock make the most sense. Pidcock is has he, what's his highest finishing in this race? Pidcock, I can't remember. Well, he was hyped up massively last year, and I don't think he was in the top twenty. Let's have a look. Yeah, he he's a really weird one. Where yeah, he needs to follow the move. But I just don't know whether he's going to be able to. He's do come fifteenth in twenty twenty one and he DNF last year. It's not a good record. <laughs> no, he does have the descending on his side. That's the one thing where if he is slightly gapped. But I guess with Ghana not being in great form as well, I think Pidcock's perhaps a bit favoured. So that could be one thing. In well, his favor. have you seen the interview with Ghana? I think it was for Ineos, like their social media, where he basically said that riding up the Poggio full gas is really good training for the team pursuit because he's got to do X hundred watts for so many oh. minutes. So I'm not saying he's going to use it as the most um, over the top training session that Ernan's yeah. ever done, but I have a feeling in my head that because Pidcock's going so well at the moment, he'll just be in the draft of Ghana. Ghana will drop him off at the top at the 6% point on the Poggio where everyone attacks and then Pidcock tries to follow Pogaccia because I'm not sure. I mean, I know Ayuso did an incredible time trial at Torreno, but you'd expect Ghana to win that 99 times out of 100 if he was at the top shape. So he's clearly building to the summer. And I think I'm not saying he's a domestique because he may still, you know, be at the front of that group, but I don't think he's in the shape to follow that G1 or G2. Imagine a scenario where he doesn't make that first group containing. Pogacar and Van der Poel, that's what we're hypothetically saying. He doesn't make that group, so he's in group two, but also Coy is in that group. That means that Laporte will work for Coy in a sprint, and that is going to really ruin Laporte's chance mm -hmm. of getting points. 
But if Laporte is through magic legs day able to follow a move of Piatra or Van der Poel up the Poggio, which I think is is pretty possible considering that he's looked really good so far this year, then he's going to be really good value. So you it's a it's a definite 50-50 with Laporte. It's not a absolute certainty that he's a really good pick. But it also depends on how you think Coy is, whether you think he's going to be able to be, be a good climbing, whether he's going to climb well enough on the Poggio. On to the 22 credit riders. I don't like any of these, to be honest with you. Alaphilippe, Asgreen, no, not at all. Even if I, even if Alaphilippe has won this race in the past. Ewan and Matthews, again, people continuously think back to that one Poggio year where Caleb Ewan was really good. I don't think he's got that form this year. I think Matthews, again, haven't seen enough from him this year. Binny makes the most sense in my eyes. But even then, he's going to need to not deviate in a sprint again and not get, <laughs> not get relegated. So I think Binny makes the most sense. Do you guys think that's, that's about right? Or do, uh, am I underestimating some of these 22 credit riders or not? What do you reckon? I don't think any of them are particularly worth considering, considering mm. the fact that you want to get ideally Pogacar and Van der Poel in the same team. Um, yeah. Matthews is a solid, I'm fairly sure he's probably over his career. He's probably had like 10 top tens at San Remo. Um, mm. Ewan's the one where he was awful at Toreno. Like if you didn't know he was, wasn't there, Sorry, if you didn't, yeah, if you didn't know he wasn't there, like you just, he's just, he was more invisible than Cav was, um, which worries me because he's on a big salary and he should be getting results. Um, I still remember one of my first Milan San Ramos was when he came second by about half a wheel um, mm. to Nibali. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 there's an alternate universe where Caleb Ewan has two Milan San Remo wins. Um, I just think he's not. He's probably in that bracket with Coy and Philipson. And if he's in shape, he potentially beats them. I just don't yeah. think he's... He's always been well positioned when he's done well. Yeah. But I just think he's there's too many contenders here for him to be, do well. <laughs> yeah, I just think that... San Remo seems to go through this like an evolution every single year. And it seems like even when Caleb Ewan was competitive, what, two or three years ago, it, it it's changed even since then, just with Pagatra basically arriving. And before we I move, feel on, like since twenty sixteen, there hasn't been a bunch sprint. Yeah, like it's, it's always been a group of ten. Yeah, okay. yeah, twenty sixteen is pretty much the last one. And um, before we move on, I just want to give, I think Mohoric because I I think I I didn't tune in, I didn't give my two cents on it. I feel like Mohoric is just such like a fifth place candidate. He is the dude who's going to be in a second group, but he's going to ping it like a maniac off the front and go so low. Everybody else is going to not work behind. And then he ends up rolling in whatever position is behind group one, just because mm. he will gain 10 seconds on the descent and then just go full gas to get fifth place. So um, don't sleep on Mahoric either, because yeah. even if he is in group two, he could. He, he's, he's really consistent in this race. Uh, very surprisingly so. But moving on to 20 credit riders, you got quite a few people here who you should just not be picking, basically. Um, you've got Damar and Christoph, who would have been great picks back in 2016, but then it's not <laughs> 2016 anymore. Kung, this race just doesn't suit, in my opinion. Uh, I think he'll be great for the Cobble Classics. Stoyven has won this race, but he'll be working for Pedersen. Trenton makes sense because he'll probably be the leader, but there is Meyer Hoffer. And Valens is just a domestic. That's, that's how I see it. I think Trenton could make sense. Uh, but his highest positioning in this race is 10th, uh, for those interested. So I don't really think the 20 credit riders are that great. Um, so I'm just going to move us on to the 18 credit riders instead. Uh, Pedro, 18 credit riders, do you like any of these? Yeah, um, actually, there's one rider that um, I think that might do very well. Um, it's Cosna Foy. Mm. Uh, he's been looking. He's been looking okay. Um, he's been consistent, which is something that we don't see very often with him. You know, um, 
it's been consistent this year it's been competitive um and uh the only problem with him is that people will probably think that he'll just pull out a cosmo and can come 90 second or something like that you know but uh apparently he's been consistent this year and i think he probably from the 18 credit riders taking in consideration that uh Soren Kra has been struggling with a knee injury or something um i think cosmo might be the best option right lisi will probably just be working on pogacar's lead out train you know <laughs> um trying to launch him in the podio and zangla um i don't think it's the race for him mm. yeah also, my problem with also sorry just sorry. adding something um when we were talking about the 24 credit riders uh about peacock um he's been climbing okay and let's say even if foggy or just some other rider manages to get a gap and like 10 seconds he's a crazy descender you know that he, he might be able to recover some 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 of the time and and maybe join the front group even if he's dropped on the podio um and we know he has a kick it might be a a, a pretty good rider here yeah absolutely I feel like my only problem with uh, with Axel is that he was like the, he was going to be the guy for Milano Torino. He was like perfectly designed for that race, and he did absolutely nothing. Like I didn't even know where he finished. It was like third from last, and that is a was massive. Like, yeah. That was like well, a I feel like because me. of that race, like once Alberto Betio went, and then everyone's trying to chase him and we'd all made, made fun of bora for having a climbing team but then fair play like they it was it turned into a climbers race but he probably like warren Schold, i think was last and it's like they've clearly just seen it going and they're like well it's msr at the weekend we're not going to kill ourselves so we'll just sit up yeah. i really think that i actually not disagree a lot but i disagree a bit with pedro on zongla because i really think he's better than he's like a mini upgrade of cockard for this race because i really i really think he can i don't know, yeah. i think he's a potential sort of g2 contender yeah. where he's he's much lighter much smaller than the sprinters so i think he's okay although as we're looking at this list there's someone who's two less than him that i much prefer so <laughs> <laughs> is that is that better or by any chance it might be after a bit of pre uh, recency bias, but yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, Betiol is very tempting. Sixteen credits is is quite cheap for a dude who is obviously in very one good Flanders. form. Flanders. <laughs> he won Flanders um, back in what was it, twenty nineteen? Something like that. Yeah, I think it's twenty nineteen. Yeah, Betiol is a really interesting one. I just. I really don't. I I remember him basically setting up Al Philippe in 2019 for this for the, up the Poggio. I think he attacked first. It was that year where where Betio was like six credits in Vela games, mm. and then he went and won Flanders. So I don't know. Does he have the characteristics? Does he have enough kind of punch, like to immediately kind of snap with a? Well, he showed it... some snap at Torino, didn't he? Like sprinted That's past true. the entire UAE team uphill. So yeah. he left. He looks leaner. Maybe it's because he had a super sort of um, vacuum packed TT suit on, um, but he looks pretty lean. Mm -hmm. And he's a TT specialist. It's also a classic specialist. So he and he can sprint. So if there's mm -hmm. a year for Betio, he's sort of. Pre I'm not, I don't think he can win at all, actually. But I think he's in the similar bracket as Mahoric, where he's like a top five candidate. Yeah. I agree. I think he could definitely be a group two, but kind of a late flyer. Definitely can, could come top five or six. Or even Soren Kral type thing. Yeah, he could, he could definitely do something like that. I agree. Del Toro is a recent addition. Part of me in some alternate universe thinks that Poggy likes to wheel go of Del Toro at the Poggio. Del Toro goes solo. Nobody expects it. He's at odds of any no or other something <laughs> mad, mad like that. But I, I just don't see it happening. Um, Kierkowski is here. 
the winner of the greatest edition of this race back in 2017. Um, it won't be repeated, but I am I live with that day in my mind forever. Uh, last photo finish, finish of all time. <laughs> it, it, is, it is literally the coolest finish of all time, and I refuse to believe anything else. Um, but my um, my nostalgia aside, Luke Lamperty with Alaphilippe and yeah. Alex Green not looking that great. Um, Lamperty's more tempting, isn't isn't he, Dan? I think he's too expensive for me, unfortunately. Yes. I'd love him to be sick. He should be six, to, let's be honest. Um, if his uh, Iman compadre uh, Magnier was here, he'd be six too. Um, so he's too expensive, but I think he he's up there with uh, sort of a Stuyven, sort of like ideally suited for this race because he's got a sprint and he can he can climb way better than I thought he could. Like let's remember he came from a British continental team in Trinity last year, so he already looks like a world tour puncher ish. Let's say pro. Conti puncher um but the thing is quick step have got so many good options uh, as much as everyone doesn't like him moscon you know might be okay um who's like casper pedersen he's got a good punch um but I, yeah i honestly think lamperty is the best option for quick step here yeah that's, that's fine uh earth fan there are plenty of other 16 credit riders here um, do you like any of these other ones, Narsen, Scoins, that kind of guy? I just, I'll start by, John had a message for us, and he told us that his podium will be Mats, some Dutch guy, that uh -huh. should be Van der Poel, and of course, you can get the third one, it would be Tom's, so mm -hmm. that's, that would be John's podium. But as for me, I really, really, really like Maxim Van der I don't know if he can win from this sprint if he's in the small group, but there's a high, there's no Bonodoli here, so he will be the leader for Lotto Destiny. And at 16 pride credit, I really like him, and I think he's the second best option of the Alberto Bicho. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. I feel like my only concern with Van Hills is. He'll probably be in that second group, but how is he going to do in a sprint in that second group when you consider that it's also likely to contain Pedersen, Laporte, Mohoric, Pidcock? I feel like that's my only drawback of him. Um, I feel like he, he is fast, but fast against climbers, but the second group will probably contain some more like bigger boys. But I think there's 16 credits, he's still good, so yeah, I, I think that's a pretty pretty fair shout. I mean, Oliver Narsen as well is a pretty cool one. If you're kind of, again, feeling kind of a 2019 nostalgia when he came second, you could go with him. But I think there's some decent quality here with Betty O, with Lamperty, Narsen, Tom Schoins, Van Hills as well. I think you've got some good options there, absolutely. 14 credit riders, I think there's, there are a few actually, which we could talk through. Pedro. Uh, 14 credit riders. I mean, there's going to be some names which are going to stand out here for everyone, but do you want to yeah. talk us through some of the best ones? I mean, um, so far, the, the one I'm really curious about is probably Narvaez. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think people will give him many credits, you know, not trust him that much, but he started the season really well. And he's the kind of rider that we know he can do classics. You know, he's, he's good um, uphill. He has a nice kick. He can sprint in a smaller group. Uh, I really like him, to be honest. Um, I'm also curious to see, of course, how PT does. Um, hopefully, he'll be in the second group, I believe. And if he's in the second group, he's a, a good... Uh, He's a very good pick because he has a, a nice sprint. Um, so probably I would go with one of these. And let's not forget, of course, about Milan. Um, this guy, I mean, he surprised me. Like He climbs really, really well for a guy his size, you know. And uh, uh, I actually believe in the 14 credit riders. There are 
some good ones and even when you compare it with the 16 credit riders like the van gills the um, the Betios, they m might be competing with them and i mean if you need to reduce your costs it's always a good option there are some really nice options here yeah absolutely i, I couldn't have put it better myself let me let me just throw this hypothetical scenario out there again because Milano San Remo is just full of this is this is what you do in a preview you, you try and imagine some scenario and you think if it's realistic or not Milan's obviously in very good form we've all seen that we saw him climbing really well at Terreno and Dan was talking about Ghana doing this kind of effort because it's good training for Olympics obviously something which Jonathan Milan's going to be doing is it too outrageous to believe that Jonathan Milan could do exactly what Filippo Ganna did last year? Dan. He's a very similar build, very similar weight, height. Yeah. So I, if, I don't know. I hadn't is thought it, of that. It, yeah. It, it's um, not that crazy to believe. Yeah. I'm now just thinking about Milan and Pedersen basically doing a two up time trial at Poggio. Um, <laughs> like who works for who? <laughs> um, yeah, like he's in incredible shape, clearly. Having won, I think he won, well, we won the uphill sprint, he beat Phillips in an uphill sprint at Torino. Uh, I was amazed at his time trial performance, at, um, in the first stage. So he's clearly, yeah, and I think 14 is actually quite cheap considering the week he's had. Um, there's so many 14s, by the way, that we could, like Marijn Vandenberg's another one, yeah um but yeah milan really does have that shape to do a ghana and have a sprint thing is my only problem with ghana not ghana no problems with ghana my only problem with milan is the distance because i'm mm. not sure if he can it's, it's one thing doing it at the end of a boring Torino stage but after all that sort of little pet, um chips away at your energy with all those little little hills I feel like I don't, I don't want this to be the case at all, but I feel like Milan could be a kittle where, mm. you know, he's the best sprinter in some scenarios. But as soon as you put 280 kilometers in there and then put him up a hill, he just goes pop and can't do it. Yeah, that's true. Because I mean, some of those Torino stages were pretty long. I think one of them was like 220k ish. Mm. But like you say, it's uh... they're very low intensity. They're not. They're not yeah. trying to drop people. <laughs> yeah, all the teams exactly. riding. All the teams riding are trying to set up for their sprinter in the first place. So. Yeah, it was that stage which Milan won against Phillips on that kind of uphill drag. You know, there was a slight kind of like three k, three percent climb, but mm. you know, it was easy-ish. There's no UAE team Emirates. We are going to drill everyone into the floor pace going on there. No. So I, I do agree, but there's that that is the question mark with Milan. Plus the fact that there's also Pedersen here. And we're not sure how Lead or Trek are going to line up. I would expect them to be going all in on Mads as a realistic person to win this, rather than the person who's, I'm not sure if he has done this race before, but the kind of the young gun um, wonder kid. I think it's better to go with Pedersen. But I think it was a cool, it's a, it's a, it's a hypothetical to throw out there nonetheless. I think Piffy is the most, um, is the safest one. Um, Fred Wright, Velasco. I mean, Velasco will probably be top 20. But that's not what we're here for. Fred Wright mm -hmm. will be setting up. Mahoric, Van Schold won't make it because his climb. He's is usually the positioning guy onto the Poggio. I swear yeah. I remember vividly last year or the year. No, well, it must have been two years ago because it was the year Mahoric won. And it was him and probably Pasqual on positioning into the Poggio, which I was sad about because I was like, come on, Fred. You, you, can, yeah. you can top 10 this race, but he's clearly being used as a positioning guy. Yeah, very true. Um, so that's it for 14 credit riders. 12 credit riders, you've got Albanese, who has been a bit comsy at the moment, to be honest. Um, and then you got Moscon, like we said earlier, love him or hate him. Well, you, you, you probably either love him or, well, no, you probably don't even love him. You probably just <laughs> neutral or hate him. I mean, that's like, gonna like you to your um, Serrano, maybe. But none of them particularly entice me. Um, Laurence is fairly cool for Alperson to Koenig, even if he is just there for, to get assist points. I don't expect him to be doing much. Like Dan says, the distance 
the fact that he's never done this race before, the fact that he is so hot and cold, it's it's ridiculous. It's like well, he says he's working boy. for. He said he's working for them. Uh, for uh, I can't remember exactly what the quote was, but it's quite a long quote where he basically yeah. said, "We're working for Vanderpol, but I'll also be there to help out Philipson." So That's it could be a scenario where not that they can particularly pay much attention to team radios when they're going full yeah. effort, but he might be the one trying to get Philipson back to the front. Yeah, it's true. Well, I mean, if, if he finished top 20 but got assist points, that's not bad. Mm. Um, other 10 credit riders, there are some. I, I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of Chris Nalens for this. The guy who launched Nibali in 2018. <laughs> But I don't think that Israel Premier Tech have a really big leader in this race at the moment. I know they have Corbin Strong, but he's been a bit, again, a bit, bit average. And I think their leader is probably someone you scroll past at 12, which is Simon Clark. Um, I don't, I'd say well, Nalens is better. Nalens is probably better. I just think Nalens is the lighter guy who can go on the podio, but Clark is often, or well, he's the experienced Aussie who can you know finish a bit mm. um i'm not saying either of them are particularly good options but, yeah. uh clark i just have a bit of nostalgia for clark just because he's that journeyman who's pretty good yeah i think that i think nailings could be like a top 15 like he's not gonna be sprinting for any sort of crazy high positions and then i also quite like kevin vermarker i mean he came fifth place the other day at Milano torino despite having no teammates i thought that was pretty good and also the top 10 at worlds yeah, I've, and also the mark is yeah. just uh, I don't know. He apparently he's the leader for DSM in this race because their team is that bad. <laughs> well, I feel bad for Bevin and Bittner. I mean, Bevin is a different yeah. case because Bevin's had Bevin's had really weird couple of years, like with form and injuries and whatever. Because in another in previous years, Bevin I would have thought would be really good for a race like this. But and yeah. Bittner is Bittner is your, your classic low credit guy who finishes yeah. like 18th or something um but yeah i don't expect either of them to get over the podio so uh um the marker very good yeah absolutely and credit riders does anybody like any of these at all i don't really i, I just old arnie old arnie maybe uh, put yeah. novak for assist points if you just fill your team with uae <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, um Sparagly. I mean that when this isn't 2016, man. Come on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm exactly. It's it's really clutching at straws looking at here. Um basically they're all really expensive assist point getters. That's uh that's what we've summarized from there. But I'll tell you what, Hedro, do you have any good six credit riders that should be that we should be made aware of? Because I know one that I like, <sighs> but I was trying to find someone I like here, you know. Um, honestly, um, I think I'll just go, if I have to, and I probably will have to pick a six credit rider, I'll just end up picking a, a guy for the assist points like Kirsch or something. Um, but there are some okay options that might be might be going on the, on the breakaway um canal is climbing okay might do something uh like dan said before before the port, before we started recording i guess um the vice brothers might go on the breakaway um but i don't see that many va that much value here uh, i'll just end up picking a, an assist point guy so probably that will be my 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 choice Irfan, um, any six credit riders that you like the look of? It depends if you're looking for your breakaway rider, like you guys already mentioned them, and there's the expert of breakaway in the zero, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sokorado Sokura, Sokura, from Badiani, he's a six credit. You will always be finding him in the breakaway. And there's one guy for sure he'll be in the breakaway is Jonas Rudge from EF Education Easy Post. Yeah. And 
there's uh, will there be a lot of talk about Marius Merofa, and I think I I looked into him last year or the year before, and he did absolutely rubbish in the Milan <laughs> San Remo, and it's going to be a long race. And there's Matteo Trentin, and that's the little thing that make me a little unsure about him. But he's a good option, I think, Marof. He's been looking fantastic this season so far. He's building up. He plans well. He sprints well. So I think he's worth it for this great yeah. take your chance with him. Yeah, I agree. I think his, I see Meyerhofer as my favorite six credit rider because I don't, I, to me, I don't even, I don't really see him making. I don't see him making group one and I don't really see him making group two, but there is going to be like a group three sprinter category, I guess you, you, you could say. And I'm just trying to get us over to the scoring system and see, could he come, let's say, I don't know, the first and second group take you down to 16th place, even 17th place. Maya Hoffer comes fourth in that sprint and ends up finishing, I don't know, somewhere like 23rd. That's still 96 points. And I think that's actually pretty decent for a, a six-credit rider. But you then have to go over prospect of, like we said earlier, about breakaway points. If you get somebody who's in a breakaway and they make it to 50 kilometers to go, then they get 120 points. So that's more than Maya Hoffer would get maybe in that hypothetical scenario unless you think that Meyerhoff is going to do better than the 23rd or whatever I've given him um, in this make-believe scenario in which case go with Meyerhofer um, if you but basically I think it's between sort of Meyerhofer and Canal maybe as the actual people who will come inside the top 30 versus going with assist points or breakaway points and that's mm. sort of where I think we're at with with those ones but we've still got four credit rides to go through dan do you like any four credit rides or are they all just a bit rubbish well before i do that very briefly i was pointed out um i was talking about my stars team oh yeah because for the first time ever aaron Bruru is not doing Milan san remo so i said who on earth can come seventh now and baronetia was pointed out who i think was on kahu Rural before he's only six and he was top 20 uh in both of the harder sprints that coy and i want to say pedersen won no coy sorry coy won both of them but baronetia was top 10 so he's kind of he's a lot i think he's a lot taller than uh um uh, than aaron buru but he's got that mm. punchy sort of thing so yeah him as an option uh for the fours i honestly just as a sort of laugh thought well having seen the dsm postanel press release where they've said uh, yeah. Kevin's our guy and then we're just going to send people in the breakaway so I, I've never picked him and I've never ever thought to pick him but just mine just failed <laughs> yeah. it's like it's honestly it could be the most nailed like few dozen points you get like I've looked at that list and other than Bittner and maybe Bevin who might fancy themselves if they're in good shape like um Edmondson uh just failed I'm going to have to remind name? myself of the start list now because I can't remember who their other people oh, yeah. are. Roman, basically, the only DSM who's in the four credit bracket is Tusfeld. Is it just Tusfeld? So it's Tusfeld, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I mean, with, you, could guess, yeah. Uh, you could guess a bit. Like, EF could send their new Japanese rider in. Uh, it depends how much they honestly, believe. Honestly, just, the look, at, just look at... The thing, the thing is, with Milan San Remo, you look at the... the, the continent uh, the pro teams like your Polti Cometas and your um mm. uh Bardiani still a thing um it's like green project or whatever that yeah hell is. yeah group Bardiani fails out oh, yeah. yeah um basically they are you know they're only really going to get two maximum three each of their riders into the breakaway yeah. and they kind of have to otherwise they're just riding I mean, obviously, it's an effort, but they're just riding from Milan to San Remo and not really doing anything. So mm. I feel like just picking any of them could be fine. <laughs> it, is, yeah. Like, I remember it used to be back in the day before 
I really knew anyone that played Velo games. It was just Mirko Maestri who you picked because he yes. was in every single breakaway for about 10 years. And unfortunately, for some reason, George has now upgraded him to an eight. <laughs> <laughs> like, cheers, George. Really That's really good. helped. Like he was the nailed on go to four credit rider for MSR and now he's not. So it's like, right, now I've got to pick a vice brother. <laughs> yeah, literally. And I, both of them are I, six this year. And it's yeah, like well, yeah. it's like Martin Tusfeld and no one. <laughs> oh, it's so like, true. I, yeah. Viederberg, I feel like he's a bit of a breakaway guy. I think uh, any of the any, any of the Movistar guys, honestly, could go in the breakaway. Yeah. I look at their team and other than Canal and Baronetia, I no. Yeah. I, I basically go with as well. Yeah, I just like go with Mr. Nice Market there, Nicholas, Mr. Nice Market. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. I, I basically just go with who, which, which team doesn't look that strong? Who is going to need to get him a breakaway to get something out of the day, and then pick riders from that team who will probably get him a breakaway. I don't think Vida, I think Vidaberg could do, considering they've got like Varnashold and Kristoff, who, no offence to them, but they ain't going to be winning this. It might be group three, so they're fighting yeah. for like the top 20. It's like, does it make sense to put a guy in a breakaway? Yes, it does. Um, because we, we a, say this every year, that there should be, like on Twitter should, we always say, there should be like a 20-man breakaway at MSR every year, because there's however many starters, 180-odd starters, and only 10 of them are relevant by the end of it yeah so it's like like i mean honestly you can ridicule dsm for saying we need to get someone in the breakaway because they're the same team that has um Kremier jacobson on their team now and roman bardet and warren bargill but honestly you're going to be talked about for set for six hours so why not yeah i did i was literally just like watching tv earlier this um today and i was just like oh wow <laughs> live commentary from kilometer zero and i thought oh my word rob hatch is going to kill himself <laughs> well they've, they've rotated they wrote they've i can't remember when they started rotating oh they do but they have booths now so i think they have a six-man rotating booth it's like sean kelly oh. carlton kirby robert McEwen, dan lloyd rob hatch and adam blythe yeah and i think rob hatch and someone else call it in but yeah carlton kirby yeah. is your classic radio four for the first four yeah. hours, guys. <laughs> Which won't what. mean anything to anyone outside the UK. No. <laughs> Literally. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll I mean, I I, I was gonna say I was gonna reveal my team, but it's already been revealed, so it just doesn't really make much sense. I'm gonna take you through my thinking. Um mm -hmm. my, I am between two teams, really. Which is the all oh, like uh, you could say three teams. The, the absolute safety option of going with Harry Pogaccio and Van der Poel and Matej Mohoric, because I think that Mohoric is going to come top 10, and I think that Pogaccio and Van der Poel are going to fly off the front and likely come both of them on the podium. That's that's my logic. Does it make more sense to, through the scoring system, does it make more sense, because there's no like breakaway points or whatever that they'll get awarded, I don't think, because I think the Poggio is like 10 kilometers, I, I don't know. Yeah, so basically, it, it finishes with 2.5k to go. So. Yeah, so basically, there is no point thinking about breakaway points. It's like just the finishing points. Does it, in a weird way, could it make more sense to go with something like Pedersen and, I don't know, Pidcock, and then I get these extra points? And like, I could put them and get Betty all. I could put on like Piffy. I could put them onto these guys and get, or I but. I don't really know. Like I could. Monuments I, I are really, as yeah. much as you ever think, monuments are really easy to pick because there's only five guys in the world who tend to win yeah. monuments at any one time. So, as much as yeah. you know, you might want to balance things out a bit. I think it's worth going without your Pidcocks, your Pedersons yeah. to get Pogacar, and because it's going to be, you know, yeah. I mean, it'd be much yeah. harder if Wout was here because then you'd have three. 32 credit riders. Um, but Pedersen and Mohoric are relying, well, not Mohoric necessarily because you're going to put him in, but uh, I, yeah. I'm looking at that top bracket. And I mean, I say I'm, <laughs> I've got one from the top bracket and then two from the B bracket. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. yeah. Yeah. I'm basically deciding between 24 credit riders, which one I think is, I think it's going to finish highest. I think. 
I think Laporte and Pidcock have the highest chance of being able to follow and be in Group 1 through some kind of good day. And I, I don't know who that might be. I think that Pidcock could have a magic day. Um, I think Laporte is more certain based upon his recent form. Um, I just think that and Vizma Lisa Bike just clearly have something good going for them right now. Like It's just working. Mm. So I think it's really between those two. So I think my team's going to end up like this. I want to try and like get in like a fourth rider and make it all clever and fancy. But at the end of the day, I might you just know be who's winning. I, I, I might just go with it because at least I can sit there in the comfort of Massetti and know that I've got the two big favourites for when they go attacking. So that when they cross the line, I don't go, why the flying F did I not pick up? Because <laughs> then I'd feel really, really stupid. And sometimes... Sometimes a story that wins and you can't do anything about it. It's like <laughs> my dad had story on that year. I, I was I can't oh. legit. Wasn't it? But, didn't didn't Dan Lloyd or Dan Lloyd's dad have story at like yeah. hundred and twenty to one or something stupid? Oh, not like that. I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll go through. Oh, it was Nibali, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah anyway. well, we'll go through other people's teams. Dan, we'll start with you because you're at the top of my screen. Um, who's on your current six man team? So, I mean, it hasn't changed since... It's the first time I haven't changed my team as we've been going through it. Um, I know, it's a novelty. Uh, so we've got Van der Poel, because I think no matter the scenario, he's top three. <laughs> um, Pedersen, Laporte, because they're the fastest guys who can potentially follow Van, that front group. Tonelli, because he's a breakaway monster. Davide Bice, because he's a breakaway monster. And Maris Meyerhofer, because he's going to come top ten. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Good reasoning and i don't see I, I did sorry i did i did think about looking at the fours but when i yeah. saw the spare credits i had i was just like i don't need to use these credits <laughs> i don't but i'm going to anyway <laughs> i don't know how you feel it was like it was like about milana torino the other day you just yeah. this is i need thing of i need to use 100 credits <laughs> it feels wrong not to it doesn't i said sat on 96 and it's wrong <laughs> So wrong. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Pedro, who's on your six-man team right now? Ah, uh, I'm still trying to decide whether to take Foggy or not. Um, I have already made a decision. No MVDP for me this time. Oof. Yeah. Um, right now, I have Mats Pedersen, Matej Mohoric, Thomas Pidcock, Maxim Van Hils. Alex Kirsch and just some random for credit rather. That's and horrible. I might, if you allow me to add something, last year, I think we all remember the top 10, more or less, you know. Um, I'll read you the winning team of the Velo Games, Milan San Remo. Okay. Um, Filippo Ghana, Soran Krah Anderson, fifth, Anthony Turgis, ninth. Christophe Laporte, 13th, and Magnus Court, 14th, and then just uh, Novak, he didn't score any points. So, no first, really? no third, yeah. Wow. I was surprised. So the best team... Is that just because of how many points are available for the lower-ranking yeah. riders? Wow. I think it's... I mean, yeah, that's really... Important. Right, I'm tearing up the team. <laughs> Tear up the team. <laughs> I forget Poggy. I mean, it does make sense because if you say, if you said realistically, because we're saying that the breakaway points don't really make that much matter. Don't worry, if I'm, we will get onto your team just in, in one minute. If you say it's first break, and uh, there's no breakaway points because 20 kilometers to go, 10 kilometers to go, nobody's solo at that point. I, I don't care what you believe about the Chipressa being a launch pad for Poggy. Um, he gets 600 points. That means you need to find some a combo who can get six and seventh, or like seventh and eighth, pretty much. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's like, can you, you know, could you get in a piffy to get that position? Can you spread out your points a little bit more? Get your Pidcocks and Pedersons in there. I think it's possible, but I do think that the the pricing, like Pedersen being twenty six. Like you, you can only really get like four, I think. I want to say like you could maybe get, like you could get Pedersen, Pidcock, Laporte, and then like a Betiol or something. Yeah. But then you're really stuck with like maybe you get Meyerhoff and maybe you get Lucky there. 
and yeah. he gets into the top 10. And then you just got a random four. Who's that Novak from last year? Who maybe get one of the breakaway and you, and you win. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really interesting. Um, I think the safety aspect is just go with Poggy and, and Vanderpool. Exactly. If you want to try and get the best team, don't don't pick them. Is what we're saying. I mean, um, my super classico. Uh, sorry, uh, my super classico already started really really bad. So I need to go for the win, not for the. Hail Mary. Yeah. Love it. Um, I'm that doing best team. I'm doing that terrible. best team is it the team that comes first or the team that's most efficient with the credits? If that makes no, sense. The team that comes first. Oh, okay. It could that have been better. Where is yeah. where is where is Jeremad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, where is he? Okay, what's it? Fan, uh, fan. After all that discussion, um, I hope I hope you've got the oh, winning yeah. team. <laughs> so, for me, I there was I was quite set on not taking Pogacar, and. Throughout the our conversation today, I started changing my mind, and now I'm a bit torn. But for my team, for sure, I have Van der Poel, Betjol, Marofa, and Thomas Champion because he's the French champion of breakaways. Mm. And I'm left with enough credit for either to choose between either Pogacar and Vermaque or Matt and Van Gilles. Mm. And right now, I think I'll go with Matt and Vangel. So it will be wonderful. Yeah. Matt, Petrol, Vangel, Myrofa, and Champion. Yeah. I like that team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything. And now I have no, basically, there's no point in me revealing my team because I have absolutely no idea. I've got to spend <laughs> the next day on this on this website clocking up more time <laughs> creating five editions of teams and trying to imagine a scenario which conforms to my bias narrative to try and persuade myself to pick certain riders it's just going to be it is the thing that msr that always happens apart from last year because pagarcha yeah. did pagarcha things like it will go over the top of the podio and you think i've got the front five riders this is amazing or whatever whatever it is but then they all come group two it's the year Stoyven one i think i went from having the front the, the front four riders to then they got caught and then it was <laughs> then Stoyven one and sagan was there and it was like it just the oh. the scenario just inverts which is such the way with one day races well wasn't it omelette pet newsblad as well like it was matteo jorgensen off the front and it was like oh my god i'm gonna win this race and then it just all comes back together and it inverts yeah i might just have kind of one team of one riders of LA games and then just have all the other riders on my fantasy cycling app <laughs> and then either way I'm yeah, happy. Yeah. <laughs> just try and Pick just try scenarios. To be happy, basically um all right oh, that's good um there is the whole like classic squad game as well which i did a video about but honestly i feel like we would end up talking for so so long so we're just gonna wrap it up here <laughs> instead maybe we'll uh try and drop in on some of the classic squads game stuff with transfers as we go through um i pres i expect that people's teams are fairly similar um across the board so i don't think it's going to be too too insightful so that is what it is um be sure to put in the comment section down below what you're thinking in terms of are you going to go with pagacha and vanderpool now that this incredible enlightening information has been shared to us by pedro um, has the rule book been completely torn up? Um, who knows what's going on? Is is dawn dusk and is dusk dawn now? Is is light dark? Is yin yang? Is water even wet? I don't even know anymore. Uh, but all that is left to say is to stay safe out there, and we'll see you whenever the next race will be. <laughs> <laughs>